You probably saw it in the cinematic trailer for the game, the dragonborn with the sword on his back. But then you got the game and you realized, I can't do that. With dual sheath redux, you can. I'm Slothability, and I'm here to help you with installation. If you are a mod organizer user, you're watching the wrong video, and you'll want to watch my friend GamerPoet's tutorial instead. For those of us using the Nexus Mod Manager, let's get started. Let's start off by going to the Dual Sheath Redux page and looking under the Requirements section. You'll see that we need SKSE, SkyUI, the Java Runtime Environment, and the XP32 Maximum Skeleton. Now look under the Recommended Mods as well. You'll see Immersive Animations, which I'll be covering later in the tutorial, and the Four's New Idols, or FNIS. Notice the Four's New Idols says that it fixes most animation issues when using new animations and skeletons. We're going to be installing new animations and a new skeleton, so this is absolutely necessary. Since we already have Skyrim, we can go ahead and click on the SKSE link, and it'll take us to a page that looks like this. Here, you have a couple different options on how to install this. You could use the auto installer, which will do all the hard work for you, or you can just as easily manually download the archive and do a couple copy-paste steps into your Skyrim data folder. If you're really unsure, just watch the video that's linked on the SKSE page, as it's a really good tutorial from Gopher. Moving on, let's click on the link for the Java runtime environment, and we'll end up on a page that looks like this. You'll see a giant red button that says Free Java Download. Click on that and install it. It's safe to download, and you'll see why we need it later. Next, let's start downloading mods that go directly into our Nexus Mod Manager, but hold off on actually installing them for now. We'll do that part together. So let's make our way to the Sky UI page and download it. This will allow further customization of the mod using an MCM menu, which we'll be taking a look at later in the game. After Sky UI, let's take a look at the XP32 Maximum Skeleton page. Here, you'll see that this mod has its own requirement we'll need to install first, and it's called Realistic Ragdolls in Force. On the Realistic Ragdolls in Force Files section, you'll have a couple different options here. It's simply a matter of preference, but I always choose the Realistic option. Only select one and download it. Now that we have that, we can finally make our way to the Files section of the XP32 Maximum Skeleton. Here, you'll have two options, but in this tutorial, we're only going to cover one of the versions. We're going to be using the version underneath the Groovetama's XPMS E version we're going to be using the XPMS 193A. Once we have that downloaded, we can move on to the Immersive Animations page, so click on the link on the DSR page. Once here, you'll click on the File section and you'll see that there are a lot of options here, 16 in total. Don't be intimidated, this is very easy to explain. The reason there are so many files and options here is so that users can pick and choose certain animations they know they want and not even bother with the main file at the very top, which contains all the options. To keep things simple, we're going to be downloading the main file called Immersive Animations Nexus Mod Manager Installer Complete Pack. Speaking of custom skeletons and new animations, let's make our way to the Four's New Idols page. Once you get to the Files section, you do not need the spell add-on, you only need the first main file, so go ahead and download it. Last but not least, let's go back to the DSR page, and finally we can download Dual Sheath Redux. Alright, we finally have everything we need to make this work. Now it's time to open up our Nexus Mod Manager and go through and activate the mods. Let's start with the easy ones first. Find and activate Sky UI, Force New Idols, and Realistic Ragdolls in Force. Not bad so far, right? This next part is where a lot of people run into issues. Here, order of installation is key. Before we can activate XP32 Maximum Skeleton, we need to activate Immersive Animations. Once activated, you'll be prompted with a menu which gives you a lot of different options. If you have other animation mods you prefer, you can simply ignore the top two options and focus on the options for sheathing and unsheathing animations below. Unfortunately, we can't pick and choose all of these animations at the same time, as this would cause a lot of animation conflicts. So you'll need to pick an animation for your playstyle. B 
Be sure to read all the descriptions for each of the animations and choose one. I personally play with a single sword and shield on my back, so I pick the option found here. You could also use dual sword wielding, and for that you'll want the animation over here. The dual swords animation also works if you have a shield on your back, as it says in the description. Once you've selected an animation you want, select finish and we'll move on to the next mod. Now it's time to install XP32 Maximum Skeleton. Let's activate it and go through the options together, because some of these are really important to choose or to completely avoid. This option is going to ask you how you want your bow and quiver to be placed. This is up to you and simply a matter of taste. This next option will ask if you use the Joy of Perspective mod. If you do, select yes. Since I don't, I'll select no and move on. The next option will ask you about bolt quiver placement. And again, it's just a matter of preference. This next one's very important. It's asking if you want swords on your back. Check the box and move over to the next step. Another really important choice here. It's asking if you want the animations to go with the new weapon placement. Do not check this box and move on to the next step. Just like with the swords on your back, if you want your daggers on your back as well, choose this option. But again, in the next part, remember not to choose the animations. We already have much better animations from immersive animations. For this option, since we already have Four's new idols, we're going to be picking the top option called Skeleton Rig Map. For this last part, just confirm all your choices and this will finish up the setup for XP32. After finishing the setup, it's going to ask if you want to overwrite some files from the Realistic Ragdolls and Force mod. This is normal, and select Yes to Overwrite or Yes to Mod. Finally, it's time to install Dual Sheath Redux. The first option you'll see is mandatory for the patcher and the vanilla meshes. The second option is if you have modded weapons and you want them to work properly with Dual Sheath Redux. Select the Mod Packs checkbox. Since we're using swords on our back and have the right skeleton for it, choose yes on this part and move on to the next step. Next, if you use this DLARPification project mod, then check the box. I don't, so I'll just be moving on to the next option. Now we have all the available mesh packs for the modded weapons you may or may not be using, and the installer will automatically detect the ones you have. If for some reason the installer did not auto-detect your modded weapon on the list here, find it manually and check the box. Once you're sure everything is in order, select Finish to end the Dual Sheath Redux setup. After activating Dual Sheath Redux, a tool called the Dual Sheath Redux patch is installed in your data folder and needs to be activated as well. This can be found in your Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim, and Data folder, and you'll see a new folder called Skyproc Patchers. Now open up the folder that says Dual Sheath Redux Patch. Inside, you should see an executable jar file. This is why we downloaded the Java runtime environment earlier. To activate this, you'll need to double click it. Be sure you are double clicking it. Do not right click and open. This is the wrong way to do it and may cause some errors. Now a dual sheath redux patcher prompt should show up. In the top right, you'll see patch. Select patch. Once the patcher's finished, a new ESP will show up in your data folder. Go to the data folder and double check to see if it's there. It'll be called dual sheath redux patch.esp. The new dual sheath redux patch.esp is also something that'll show up in your Nexus mod manager. You'll need to restart the Nexus mod manager and find it in your plugins tab on the left. If the box is unchecked, be sure to click the checkbox, as you'll need to make sure it's activated. If it's already activated, just leave it alone. While we're here in the data folder, navigate to the tools folder. In here, you'll see two new folders that were added when we installed 4's new idols. 
you'll want to pick the one on the right that says For New Users. In here, you'll see a giant red F icon. Go ahead and click on that. As I was saying earlier, this needs to be run every single time you install new animations or remove animations and or a new skeleton. This is to ensure that your game is stable and does not crash the desktop. While you could technically call it a day here and try it out in game, there's one last tool I highly recommend to you before you start that. Loot is the beta version and successor to Boss. It's absolutely vital when ordering your mods, and you'll find that it fixes a lot of the issues you may already be having, and or will prevent further issues when installing a lot of mods like we did today. So I highly recommend you use this before loading up your game. Now let's go in game and check to see if everything worked out alright. I'm going to go through and I'm going to check to make sure that every weapon is where it's supposed to be. Once you're in-game, if you make your way to the MCM menus, you'll see that there's a dual sheath redux menu as well. Here, you can choose to have the shield on your back and staffs on your back exclusive to the player, or have the NPCs use it as well, with simple checkboxes. If you ended up going in-game and saw that your animations looked a little funny with the new weapon placements, you can easily change them back in the Nexus Mod Manager. You just have to uninstall Immersive Animations and XP32, and then reinstall it in the same order as we did before, with immersive animations coming first, and then XP32 on top. After that, don't forget that since we changed animations and a new skeleton again, you're going to need to run the four's new idols, just like we did earlier in the data folder under the tools folder. And we've done it! Congratulations! You have successfully installed dual sheath redux, immersive animations, and XP32 maximum skeleton. If you found this tutorial helpful, feel free to like, favorite, comment, or subscribe, or share it with your friends. And make sure you endorse all the mods that we use today, as a lot of modders have worked really hard to make sure this works in the game. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.